Hey, we're here at Apple's Spring Forward event in San Francisco, California, and I am wearing the Apple Watch on my wrist. This is a 42 millimeter version. It's the full Apple Watch, so this one is a 599. And this is my first time using one that's actually working and getting to play around with all the different interaction modes. So for example, you can swipe down from the top to get your notifications. You can scroll through them with your finger, but that's kind of twitchy, so that's where the digital crown comes in. Trying to actually spin it with your thumb is sort of hokey, but if you just take one finger and move up and down on it, it actually feels pretty good. And I found that this has got a little bit more resistance than the original Apple Watch demo that we tried uh, last year, so I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, if you hit it, you go back home, and you can hit it again to go to your apps. You can scroll around through apps with your finger. You can also zoom in and out with the digital crown. And there's just a few apps loaded up on here. There's one here is an Uber app, so we can load up Uber. And it may have a difficult time with the connectivity in here. But there it is, so I can just hit that button to request an Uber if I wanted to. Um, why not? Let's see what happens. There I guess we're, uh, we're requesting an Uber. So I'll hit the crown again to bring it back home. I can hit it again to go center it, and then hit it again to go back to the watch face. Now the other button here, if you hit it once, it takes you to a friends list, and you can scroll through with the digital crown to find the person you want to contact, tap on their face, you tap call, theoretically it would call them, or if you're not connected to the phone, you can send a message, so I'm going to tell this person I'm on my way. So the other thing you can do is if you swipe up from the bottom, you get to this area called glances. You set up which ones you want to have on your phone, and then you can swipe through to see a whole bunch of you know, customizable widget style information. You can tap in to look at it. Again, hit the digital crown to go home. The last interaction that I got to try is force touch. So if you just hit the thing really hard, basically, it acts like a second tap, and then you can go through and look at your different watch faces. So I could select this one. I can even go through and tap on customize, and then I can tap on each element, choose what I wanted to show, each complication, and then when I'm done, that becomes my new watch face. So overall, it feels pretty good. Uh, even this 42 millimeter one feels a little bit small to me. Uh, I like a big watch, but it, you know, it looks great. Uh, the leather feels really nice on my wrist. The crown, uh, I thought it was kind of hokey, but I'm actually more impressed with it than I thought. Um, it takes a while to sort of learn what all the different interactions are, but once you do, I imagine that's pretty simple. There you go. This is a working Apple Watch. It should be available in April. And again, this one starts at $5.99.